what's up you guys? I have a fun video today planned. We are gonna do a review of the Oro's strike indicators. This video is not sponsored by them. They did not send me any. I picked these up from a local fly shop. They looked interesting. I've heard some people talking about them and I thought it would be fun to give them a try. So that's what we're gonna do today. It's been about four or five years since I've actually used a strike indicator or a bobber, right? They're bobbers. And uh, so it should be just kind of fun just to try that out. I haven't done it in so long. Kind of curious to see if I can catch some fish. It's really cold out here. It's like 20 degrees. So, you know, could be a good day for it. Maybe it's not a good day for it. We're gonna find out, but we're gonna put those indicators through their paces today and see how they work. And uh, I'm gonna let you guys know what I think of them. See if we can catch some fish on them and see what they're all about. Let's get to it. Okay, so I just wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about these strike indicators and kind of the three reasons why I think they're interesting and kind of the three reasons why I wanted to even give them a try. You guys know I don't really throw indicators, but these intrigued me, right? Okay, the first is that they're biodegradable. They're not gonna be that harmful on the environment and we go to a lot of really cool places to catch fish and you wanna try to keep those places nice like you haven't been there before. And these are gonna do a better job of that. They will biodegrade. I don't know if it's 100%, I think it's 98% or something like that. I can't remember on their website what it said. That's the first kind of reason. The second reason is that your line is actually goes through the middle of the indicator, um, which should lead to better strike detection in the long run. We're gonna test that out today and see if that's true, but I have my hunches that the line going through the middle of the indicator should help to better for better strike detection. And then the third is that with them being in line on your leader and the line going through the middle um, and this kind of cool twist on and twist off design that they have, that they should be really easy to adjust your depth for the water you're fishing. And that's one of the, the biggest things that I dislike about throwing indicators. A lot of times you'll get, you'll be fishing different water. You'll start where the water's six feet deep and as you work up the run, the water's a foot deep and you have to change your depth constantly and it can be a pain in the butt. So I'll be interested to see how that, you know, works out today. I have two sizes. I have the medium and the small. I'll probably go with the small. I'm curious to see, you know, how, how they, uh, how much weight they hold up. Um, and if we do need to go to the medium or not, but we're gonna get rigged up and see how these work. Let's give it a go. Okay, I'm headed down to the water. I wanted to mention that I am gonna give a pack of these away. So stay tuned to the end of the video to see how you can get entered into that to win a pack if that's something you're interested in. Okay, well, I've made it down to the water. I got my 10 foot two weight rigged up with one of the small indicators, the pink one. I got a couple of small nymphs on there. We're gonna jump in here and give them a go, see how they do holding up these two smaller flies. So I have two 2.5 millimeter bead flies on. Not a ton of weight, it should do okay, but let's jump in there and see how it actually does. So, I'm gonna see how this does. It seems to be doing okay holding them up right now. You can see it, I've got the pink one on there. I do have a 10 foot rod, which makes uh, nymphing with a indicator a bit easier. We're just watching that indicator to see if we can pick up any fish. It has slid way down. Okay, so one thing that I've already noticed that I'm not loving is that I was attaching this uh, little indicator to my 5X in line, and it will not lock down on the 5X very well. It's sliding around. It slid all the way down to the bottom fly, which is not great. So I'm gonna have to re-rig and put some 4X, a section of 4X where I can adjust the indicator, um, where there's still enough diameter on the tippet for the indicator to grab on and not slide around. So that's kind of a ding against it right now that I'm not loving because I generally don't like to fish tippet that's that thick. If that's not an issue for you, then it won't be an issue. But uh, I'm gonna re-rig real quick and then move to a new spot and see if we can find some fish in some slower, deeper water. Okay, 
Okay, so back out in the water. That took a few minutes. Like we had to re-rig, so that was a little bit of annoying. There's a little bit of an, an annoyance factor there. Switched up our flies, running a cheeky egg. See if that gets any fish to eat. There's a fish though. Big old friggin' trout. Huge trout, in fact. Well, let's see what the hook set is like on this bad boy because, you know, I was a little delayed there on that fish. Let's see if we can land it. Super dark, cool fish. Wow, that fish is so gold. So we got the fly out of his mouth. You can see him here. Get my hand wet here. I don't want to hold him up very much here. Cool fish, not in that great a condition, so we'll let him go. Well, we are on the board. That's good to see. So let's see if we can get another one. I got some new water. It's a bit slower, deeper, and there's a fish right away. I think it's a white fish, but I'm not sure. It's heavy. I think it's a big white fish here. Yeah, a big old whitey. And I think I lost my net. I'm gonna try to do this without getting him out of the water here. You guys can see him. Big old white fish here. Come here, buddy. I mean, enormous. Enormous white fish. Can't even and there he goes. Okay, I appear to have lost my net, so I'm gonna go find it. Okay, update. Net is gone. Looks like uh, I unclipped it on that last fish to release it and didn't reclip it. And I went up and down the river and I can't find it. Looks like it's long gone. If any of you guys find it on the river or find a big wide basket net on the river, hit me up, let me know. It's most likely mine. What a bummer, whatever. It happens. Let's get back to fishing. Gosh, I just keep having to get the ice off my guides. It is. Here we go. Real dirty. Deep, dirty egg. It's winter. It's cold. Let's just see if they're down deep. Willing to eat an egg. Let's try that. Let's give that a try. They're not eating this fly either. So. We are going to head to a new spot. Okay, moving spots. Fish weren't super active there. There was a hatch going on. It's still going on. And unfortunately, the fish just are not eating the, the bugs on the surface, which I guess since we're using indicators doesn't really matter, but it's a little bit interesting. I so far haven't figured out what they want to eat. So we're going to move spots, try some new flies, new water, see if we can find some active fish in this really cold weather, cold water. They gotta be in there eating somewhere, so let's go find them. Okay, there's a couple nice pockets right here coming up, so I am hopeful that there'll be a fish sitting in this water right here off this edge. Some deep structure. There haven't been any fish yet. There's a fish. Sheesh. I, I think, ah, uh, darn it. <sighs> Broke me off. 
broke me clean off. I think it got me on a rock. It feels like it's kind of worn out there. Okay, I put on a 3.5 bead on the point fly because I feel like the fish are actually a little deeper, it seems like to me. Huh, okay, we're gonna move up. Okay, I just dropped my reel in the water, so let's see if we can keep that from freezing shut. But let's see if we can find a fish in here, anywhere. It would be nice to get a couple more fish. Okay, that was the bottom. Go back out here a little bit. Okay. Try up in there again. There's a fish. Hope it stays on. I was so slow on that hook set. Doesn't feel real big, but at this point, take anything. I hate that I don't have my net. Nope, it's a trout on the egg. Let's bring him in here carefully. You guys can see him there. Cool fish, cool fish. The egg in the corner of the mouth. What a pretty little fish. And he's gone. Wonder if there's any more out there in that same vicinity. So, that's the day. We got a few fish. I think the question is, what do I think of these indicators? And I would, I'm kind of mixed. I'm kind of on the fence about them. You know, I would say that these things are pretty similar to any other biodegradable strike indicator that you're gonna get. I think the benefit of the through line between the two connections was a cool kind of concept, but it slips way too much on the line. So until they add some, a rubber gasket or something in there to keep that from slipping, I'm kind of on the fence if you wanted to use just a regular uh, airlock indicator. I don't think it would be that much different than this guy just because of that slippage issue. But like I said, I am going to give away a set of these. So to get that, if you're interested, sub to the channel and leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think of indicators or anything else that's on your mind. And I will pick a random winner from those comments next week. Till then. Catch fish.